Hi, everybody. I had a birthday party to go to and nothing to wear. So what would you do? I made a dress. So I figured I would share it with you. It's a very quick dress. It takes me about 30 minutes to do. Um, so I took a dress that I knew fit me and it has these cute little straps that I put on with my quilt binder. And so what I did was I folded it so that my center back was on one side and I matched up my seams and I took my little marker and I traced it out on this paper. This is flooring protector paper from the hardware store. So when they put in hardwood floors or if they're painting, it protects the floor, but it's great stuff. It's kind of heavy, great for patterns. I use it a lot um, and it's cheap, so yay. So what I did was I took my marker and all I did was trace my dress pretty close. Anywhere that I wasn't going to have a seam allowance, like where I have binding here, I traced along the edge. Anywhere that I do need a seam allowance, I just drew it in, you know, a little half inch seam allowance just along the lines. And then of course I left enough fabric at the bottom for my hem, another half inch, and I drew across there. Then when I was done with one piece, so this is the back, I flipped it around and did the same thing with the front. So in the front, I have a center seam. It's pretty straight. The back was contoured. So I did that in two pieces. The front is done in one piece on a fold. And so all I did again is trace around, left the uh, hem at the bottom. And this is what I ended up with. On my pieces, I, I wrote what it was, center front on the fold. I left what I allowed for a hem or a seam allowance. I just drew that in and made a note. Really not so much for today, but from for six months from now when I try to do it again. Uh, so this is my center front. This is my center back. So this one we're gonna sew first. So. Here's my little pieces cut out because I've made my seam allowances on my pattern. I don't have to fiddle with this. I could just either trace it or cut along the paper. The nice heavy paper um, stays better than tissue. So I was able to actually just cut with scissors really fast. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna see how fast it, we can do it. I'm gonna take this piece first. This is my back and we're gonna go over to the serger and we're gonna put it together. I'll take the front. So here I have my little air threader serger set up for a regular four thread overlock. And we're just gonna sew along. No pins. Okay, there's our center back line, that fast. So now I'm gonna open it up and we're gonna take our center, or our front piece. Make sure I'm putting right sides together and we're gonna sew down our side seams. We could pin, but it's late on a Friday. So let's just get it done. It also helps to not sew on the edge of a table. Just saying. One side. We're gonna open it up. And 
line up our end bits. Whoops. We're gonna sew down the other side. Oh no, someone get the phone. Not me. Wait, if that's you, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, look at that. We are mostly have a dress here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it right side out and we're gonna take it over to our quilt binder. Yes, this is not a quilt, but it makes wonderful straps and it finishes the edges beautifully. So what we're gonna do is we're going to first bind our front seam and our back seam. So I'm just gonna lay it right side up. This is our back piece, because it has a seam in it. And I'm gonna take my stiletto, and it's gonna help me to squish it in there. So what I'm doing is I'm sliding my dress in between the layers of the binding. So this piece is one and three quarters wide. It's just cut regular off the bolt. It's not on the bias. I wanted to make sure that my shoulder straps were gonna have a little more structure to them. I don't want them to be on the bias and sag. So here we go. <laughs> because we don't like saggy bits. All right. All I have to do is feed my fabric in. The quilt binder has like a little C shape that wraps the fabric around both sides. So. There we go. Follow around, just making sure that my fabric is feeding in the middle of that C shape. And when I get to the ends, I'm gonna press stop and cut. Okay, and I'm gonna just cut off that extra binding so as you can see it's beautiful both of my sides here are completely encased there's no raw edges no threads it's lovely so now we're going to move on to the other side so here's the front center line the neckline of my dress on the front and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to pull out a little slack here on my quilt binder and I'm gonna just feed that piece of fabric. And I'm gonna use my little stiletto and it's going to go right in between the layers of my binding. So here I go again. I'm gonna make sure that nothing is dragging cause I don't wanna make puckers or stretch out my fabric. Oop, but I do need thread. Amazing how much better it works with thread. I'm gonna go pass my thread under the foot and here we go again. Oh, I got a pin. 
pay attention here. My fabric got doubled on itself and I felt the resistance because I wasn't paying attention. So I'm just gonna feed that back in straight. I could feel the drag. I could see that it wasn't flowing nice and that's what made me look. Um, you gotta kind of be cautious with the tail of your, of your binding. This is not very long, so I can kind of keep it here. But if I were quilting or binding a quilt, I might wanna roll it up. I've seen some people put it here on the spool pin or on a, an extra outside spool pin uh, and wound it up that way. Or you can just be careful with it. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't get caught on your chair or anything because what'll happen is it will just not feed just like that. So here we go. Got to the end, press stop. Okay, my foot is up and I'm just gonna cut that again. And my back, or my front, looks as nice as my back. Completely bound and beautiful. I'm gonna come back to where I started and I'm just gonna trim that edge because it will help me when I go to turn the corner to um, not have to clip it then. When things are going well, we wanna just keep going. So there's my edge trimmed on that side. So now, We've got our front and our back um, edges bound. So what we need to do now is we need to work on our armholes. We're gonna completely bind our armhole and continue with it to make a strap. So if I start here, what I really wanna do is start in the arm seam so that when I come around and connect it, it's hidden under the arm. I don't want it to be up on my shoulder because not that it would look bad, but it doesn't look as nice as being seamless. So I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm gonna use my stiletto. I'm just going to tuck it in there. Not run my finger over. Sweet thread. Okay, and we're just gonna get started. Oh, I'm not quite in. Okay. And I'm actually just gonna sew right up off the edge here. So before I started, I measured the dress that I knew fit me. And for me, from the front over the shoulder to the back, it was eight inches. If I take a tape measure and I measure along my length of my quilt binder here, I know that right at this first turn in the, in the little guide is eight inches. So I'm gonna take a friction pen that goes away with heat and I'm going to just make a line on the right side of the fabric. It has to be on the right side, it can't be on the edge and it can't be on the back side because once it gets turned and flipped over in the quilt binder, I won't be able to see it there. It would be on the inside. So it has to be on the right side of the fabric, but you'll see. So here we go. Ah, 
So if you take a close look, there's my red line that I just made. So I know that I need to take my dress and I need for the other end to line up right there. So I want my needle down and my foot up so I can slide that piece in. And I can just tuck it right in like that. But I have to make sure that the underside of the binding stays in place. And I'm not in. There we go. Some days are easier than others. I wasn't quite in there. You know, you try and be all delicate with things and, <laughs> and it doesn't work. <laughs> all right, here we go. So now when I come to the end, before they overlap, I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna let it just tie off and I'm gonna cut. And if I had a ton of, um, of binding here, I would probably just clip it and take it out of the machine because it's kind of hard to feed it backwards. But since I'm at the end, I'm just going to pull it out. So you see, when I'm done here, I'm going to just take this piece and I'm going to cut it just like that. And I've left myself enough that I can just turn this under. So I'm going to turn under my, my, my end pieces and the end of it so that I can come through. and just finish it off and it'll be perfect and beautiful. So then I would just go ahead and do the same side again. So how much time are we in, Kelly? 18 and a half minutes. So in 18 and a half minutes, we're just about done, but I didn't want to bore you with the other side. So we're gonna go over to my cover stitch machine. Oh, wait, we need, we need a chair. A chair. <laughs> So here I have my cover stitch machine. So it's a regular serger with a cover stitch plate. My, my cutter is turned down. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish our dress. So I wanna make sure I turn it under. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna turn under about a half an inch. Just cause I know the length cause I already have figured that in when I made my pattern. So I'm going to throw in a few pins. <laughs> Oopsie. That didn't quite line up. And we're going to follow around, just turning under every eight inches or so. You can feel it as the machine passes the fabric through. where the edge of the fabric is. I'm just gonna keep going. And 
I'm gonna go all the way around. Quick, get the phone! Nah. Nah. <laughs> We're sewing, people. We don't wanna talk. Okay, almost there. Nothing worse than watching somebody else pin. Not quite enough there. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> My lovely assistant. Isn't Kelly wonderful? Yay, Kelly. Oh, that one will be safe for later. I'll pick that one up with my bare foot. <laughs> All right. So when we use a cover stitch machine, we're going to actually work from the right side of the fabric. And I have my two wide needles. This machine actually um, takes in, I've told it what kind of fabric I'm using with my fabric selector. So I have it on a heavy stretch fabric. We're gonna start on the seam line just cause it's always nice to have that be hidden. And I'm gonna just line it up. And with this type of hem, I can feel the edge of my fabric. I want that to kind of flow between my needles cause it's going to hem and finish my fabric all in one step. So let's go our foot down. that. You know what? I'm going to change this to a medium stretch. So when we look at it, right, I got my little white line, my evenly spaced stitches, and on the back, my cover or I have completely covered the raw edge of my fabric so it's all encased it's all finished and it's done um so what time are we at Cal? 2304 so in 23 minutes we've pretty much sewed our little dress um so I would have to go back and do my other strap I'm gonna finish the uh hem here so Anyway, I thought you guys might like to see that and how professional our edges can be with uh, just a little preparation and our amazing machines. So if you like our video, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, uh, anything you'd like to see, that's always good for us to know so we can make more videos and um, hopefully spread the knowledge. All right, everybody, keep stitching.